Thanks very much. Anti-whaling group Sea Shepherd is renewing its annual battle with Japanese whale hunters in the Southern Ocean. The activists will soon be making the trip to the Antarctic for their three-month campaign, but each year their mission becomes riskier with increasing potential for violence. This year's campaign has been dubbed Operation Divine Wind. It translates as kamikaze, which was the term adopted by Japanese suicide pilots in the Second World War. And members of the controversial conservation group say they're prepared to die for their cause. It might sound extreme, but exchanges between the two groups have a history of heating up those freezing waters. It started with battles involving stink bombs and flash grenades. Then in 2008, two anti-whaling activists were held hostage after boarding a Japanese vessel. But things really came to a head in January last year when the Sea Shepherd's Addie Gill collided with the Japanese whaler, the Shonen Maru 2. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. They hit it? Yeah, they hit it. The $2 million bat boat had its bow ripped off and one crew member broke two ribs. Sea Shepherd members described the collision as attempted murder. Now there are predictions that this season will be the most intense to date. I'm joined now by Sea Shepherd Captain Paul Watson. He's on board the Bob Barker, a circular quay in Sydney. Uh, Paul, good morning to you. This is your, your eighth mission. Uh, what do you hope to achieve this year? We thought that we had finished whaling in the Southern Ocean uh, earlier this year when we drove the Japanese fleet out six months, uh, six weeks in advance, uh, and they only got 17% of their uh, quota. So it makes no economic or political sense for them to return. But the Prime Minister of Japan has said that he he will not surrender to us, and that's why they've allocated 30 million dollars just to deal with us. Okay, do they go and hunt for whales in our territorial waters in Antarctica? The whales are to be killed in the Australian Antarctic Territory in, the, in Australian waters. And, uh, you know, the Uruguayans are uh, arrested and reprimanded if they catch fish down there. But the Japanese seem to be uh, given a, you know, a get-out-of-jail-free card uh, to go down and kill these whales. OK, how come you're the only ones going down there? What, what do you want the government to do? What support do you get from them? Well, we get no support from the government, but we get incredible support from the, the people of Australia. But uh, what the government should be doing is actually upholding international conservation law and protecting the sovereignty of the Australian Antarctic Territory. They should send a boat down there, a naval vessel, and order the Japanese fleet out of the Australian waters. OK. So are you really prepared to put lives at risk on missions like this? We see some pretty amazing vision of encounters on previous uh, campaigns down there. Well, I have to say, as soon as you leave dock and head down to the Southern Ocean, you're putting your life at risk. This is one of the most extreme hostile climates in the world, and we're well aware of that. We take extreme precautions to make sure that nobody's injured and that we don't injure anybody, but we cannot deny the fact that it is dangerous. Yeah. All right, Paul Watson, thanks very much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we watched Thank the you. whales go down the western east coast. It's shown on all the, uh, the television newses. And the Japanese go down there and kill the whales, and it's illegal. Let's ask our big, big guns of politics why they're not supporting campaigns like the she Sea Shepherd, Environment Minister Tony Burke, and Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey. Morning. Tony, why? Why aren't we doing anything? We send out South American fishermen who illegally fish in our territorial waters. We do nothing against the Japanese. We've taken the toughest stand of any country in the world against Japanese whaling. That's the truth. And I was at the International Whaling Commission representing yeah. Australia earlier this year. We're recognised as doing that. But they're giving but we... you the finger. They're going down anyhow. And once we took the approach that we were going to take them to the International Court of Justice, at that point we made a decision. We had to hold our nerve. You can't do anything that's going to undermine that legal case. Once you launch a legal case, you're then in that system. And yes, they take longer than you want them to. But we're the only country to have done that. And you've just got to hold your nerve and say, that's the approach that we're following and we intend to win that case and make every other decision guided oh. by how do you win it. How long could it take? Well, these things can take a number of years. Five so years. So how many whales will die in the meantime? Illegally. Oh, well, the, but whether or not it's illegal is what's being challenged in the court. But no, you boot the South American fishermen out. Why don't you just boot the Japanese whalers out? Well, this is in the search and rescue zone. This isn't in the territorial waters around Australia. We're talking about down in the Antarctic Territory, and Antarctic sea rights 
are quite different. So the, this is why the legality of it. Well, we don't accept for a minute that they're engaging in something that's scientific. They claim that they're inside the treaty because they're dealing with some, in, inside the system yep. because it's scientific whaling. It's not. Joe, should the government send a ship and what would the opposition do differently? Well, I thought the government was going to send a ship down. Wasn't that the clear intention and is that still going to happen? No, we, we did that a number of years ago to collect evidence for the legal case. And that's the only reason we've ever sent a ship down. Would so, you send a ship down? Well, sure. Why not? I mean, why wouldn't you send a ship down? To send a clear message to the Japanese that uh, this is behaviour that we are closely monitoring and it is unacceptable. Good. I think that does send a clear message. So, yeah. I, but I was under, of the understanding that the government was going to send a ship no, down no. again, no. But, but no, would you then intervene? Well, no, but you can send a ship down. We, we, we obviously support the court action. Mm -hmm. It seems as though the government's taken a long route to the court action. And this is after Kevin in 2007 mm -hmm. promised to take the court action. And was it two or three years before that action actually started? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's a bit of dragging your feet here. Okay. And uh, I think it doesn't hurt to have a ship down there uh, that is uh, obviously monitoring the situation, sending a message to the Japanese that this Good. is unacceptable. OK. Let's talk share markets. Um, they've been hit hard by the ongoing Eurozone debt crisis. Yesterday, the local market lost more than 2%. Tony, what do you think? Is, um, is the government doing enough? What more can we do to protect Australians? I mean, it's going to impact on us. Yeah, Julia Gillard warning about the issues last night at the Business Council, didn't it? Yeah, and this is where uh, the, fact that we're, uh, the fact that we're the envy of the world, true. The fact that we're insulated from international events, not true. Uh, and this is where you've got to make sure that you use the times when you've got a